Hey guys, Swakagi here with a new video going over the top 20 strongest characters in the Genshin universe so far. The reason for this video is that, well, I got bored and random thoughts get to my head like, what's better, CLB or Donda? How old is every character in Genshin? Why is there so much fan art for the game that isn't PG? You get my point. I guess we'll never know. Anyway, a few disclaimers before I start. This ranking list is strictly based on story, not in-game performance. I haven't gotten deep into the lore of the game, so I won't depend on it too much. Mainly in-game feats. Story power scaling in Genshin doesn't exist because the characters can be said to be incredibly strong in the lore and then get pooped on in the game. And I'll guarantee they'll continue to do this to show new character strengths. Now, I'm only going to be mentioning playable characters or characters with similar models that will be playable in the future. So for this video, we won't be mentioning Osile, the animal looking adept eye, or Madame Ping. And I also won't be referring to characters based on the manga. But I will mention some moments for this video. I also want to state that this is my list only. Regardless of what order I put this list in, it will be subjective. So don't hate me because I didn't include your favorite waifu on this list. And of course there's going to be spoilers for this video so here's your one and final warning. Anyway let's begin because there's a lot to explain. So before I start the actual list I want to go over some honorable mentions real quick. Uh, these honorable mentions are going to be Jean, Kurusara, Kokomi, and Kikuchin. Pretty strong not gonna lie but I didn't think they were worthy of the top 20 list. And I feel like the characters above them are stronger. But anyway uh, let's start with the actual list. So coming in at number 20 we have Lisa. Oh wow you really put a damn librarian on this list for most powerful Genshin characters. Dislike, reported, hope your dead channel stay dead. Just hear me out, okay? It's said in the game that she is the most talented sorceress to study at Sumeru Academy in the last two centuries. We don't really know how much it says about her power because we haven't been to Sumeru yet. Not only is she an expert on magic, but she also knows too much on visions. And based on what people say about her in-game, we know she's pretty strong. It's hard to decide on how powerful she could be because she doesn't really go with full potential, but I'd say she's one of the strongest in Mondstadt. Number 19, Beto. There's not really much to discuss here. She was able to slay a monster without a vision. We don't know how strong this monster really was. It could be god tier like a lot of people say, but that wouldn't really make sense. But it must have been impressive enough because after she killed it, she was rewarded with a vision. Number 18, Mona. You what? Hold on, okay, before you actually dislike the video, hear me out. I know what you're thinking. Really? Mona? The broker who can't figure out how to make more even though she's supposedly smart? The main reason I'm adding her on this list is because she saved us from Scaramouche. This means her astrology is actually useful in combat because she can sense the future. Kinda? She also claims to be slightly under Scaramouche's level. Regardless of how much you think she may be capping, her being able to sense and escape an extremely dangerous threat puts her on this list. Number 17, Klee. Surprisingly, I do not think Klee should be higher on this list. Not only is she a little kid who doesn't know anything besides making bombs, but she's easy to take advantage of in combat. The only reason she is on this list is due to her being compared to others as the strongest fighter on Mondstadt, which if you didn't already know, she isn't. One strong feat that I will give her though, is that she was able to make a Pyro Abyss Mage kill itself with just one of her Pyro Bombs. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think any other Pyro character is doing that. 16. Kazuha. This is what I like to call a Kakashi type moment. For those who are Naruto fans, you will know that Kakashi got an insane power boost near the end of the anime for like 2 minutes, which put him on literal god level. And as you all probably know, Kazuha gained a double vision power boost that allowed him to overpower and actually surprise the Shogun for a brief moment. And when I say Shogun, this is because that this wasn't the real ball, this was just the clone. So it's not the actual ball. But that's still a really impressive feat. But I won't be including this Kazuha because not only was this not his actual power, but he only used his power for 5 seconds. And not to mention that he placed the vision away. But because of that impressive feat, I think he deserves to at least be mentioned on this list somewhere. Number 15, Albedo. This one might surprise a lot of people, but Albedo is definitely a lot stronger than he seems. You probably just think he's really, really smart, right? Not only is he a master of the alchemy of anything, but he's also hiding his power from us. If arguably the strongest and most calm character in the game says this, and I quote, If one day I lose control, destroy Mondstadt, destroy everything, can I rely on you to stop me? You best believe it might damn happen. 14. Dilu. This is where we start with characters that we know for sure are pretty strong. In my opinion, Dialog is the strongest fighter on Mondstadt, ahead of everyone in the Knights of Avonius as well. There's not much to say besides the fact that he's the Batman of Genshin, and that alone is enough for me. One important thing to mention is that I'm not including his feats in the manga. For those who don't know, Dialog used a crowd delusion in the manga, and we already know how strong delusions can be, so if I were to include it in this list, he would definitely be a lot higher. 13. Ganyu. 
There's not much to say about Ganyu, but we know she's an Adepta who fought in the Archon War, so she's definitely strong. We know she's not as strong as some other Adepta because of her story mission where she had lessons from Zhao. And she's also actually half Adepti, so that might actually lower her powers even more. But being someone who helped Zhongli during the Archon War, as well as helping in the Osala fight, where she gave us a power boost, I have to give her credit. 12. Ningguang Probably the strongest 4 star character. The reason I think she's this high in this list is because of what she did there in the South Cut scenes. Like I said before, it's hard to rank the order of this list, especially since most of the time we don't see combo between other characters. But I'd say she's stronger than Ganyu because she definitely contributed a lot more during the Osawa fight. And Ganyu actually works under her, so that can imply that she's higher in more ways than one. 11. Child I could definitely put Child a lot higher on this list. We already know he's super strong based on his boss fight, and ever since that battle he claims to be even stronger than that time against the Traveler. But his illusion is taking a big toll on him to the point where he can't even stand after using it. So because of this nerf, I think the next character I mentioned is stronger than him. Number 10, Zhao. Some of you may believe that Zhao isn't stronger than Child at full strength, but I'll explain why he, I think he is. First of all, I'd say he's one of the strongest Adepti as he's seen mentoring Ganyu. He's also like a thousand plus years old, fought countless battles as one of the five Yakshas, all of which are known for being crazy powerful. Now in present time, he's lost his mind and is suffering from crippling depression. So anyway, the reason why I say this emo kid is stronger than the other child, pun intended, is because we've never seen him at his strongest. He's always calm and collected, as if he's not even trying. On top of that, during the Osala fight, he saved the Traveler from falling in one of the cutscenes, maybe implying that he's stronger than the Traveler at that point in the game, which we know that the Traveler just came back from beating Child. But yeah, I'd say Zhao is a child abuser. Number 9, Venti. Remember when I said power levels in Genshin are bullshit? Guess who I was referring to? You might want to click off this video for the third time so far, but let me explain. As you all know, Venti is an Archon called Barbados, who has the power to change the geographic landscape of all of Mondstadt, the god who has the power to let people talk to dead spirits, someone who has the power to make us shoot laser beams while flying. I'm supposed to put someone like that at only number 9? Well, what can make Venti look so weak? Oh yeah, he got embarrassed by Senora. That probably is the most that'll make no sense moment in the game. Not only did a weaker and one element traveler have to save Venti from two Fatui henchmen, but he got pummeled, slapped, and boot kicked, then robbed in broad daylight by Senora in base form. In my opinion, there should be no reason why one of the weakest harbingers should be able to do that to a god of monster. Now, Venti was definitely not going full power, but neither was Senora, so he can only base this off of in game events. If we were talking about a prime Barbados with a Gnosis instead of Bard Venti, then that would definitely make him stronger, but for this video, that's why he's not higher up in the ranking. Number 8, La Senora. Technically not playable, but we don't know for sure. You know that she embarrassed Venti before getting embarrassed herself, then getting one shot by Ball. There's not much else to say about her except that she was able to gather two of the seven Gnosis. And I only put her this high because of the Venti encounter. Otherwise, I'd probably put her below Zhao. Number seven, Dainsla. I don't think I said that right, but let's continue. This is probably the most difficult character to rank because we barely know anything about him. But I'm willing to bet anyone anything that he's pretty strong. I would imagine him being top 5 on this list since he will most likely be involved with the endgame story with Celestia and Conria. But judging how the game likes to make new characters look strong, you can bet he will be stronger than most of the current characters. Based on what we do know though, he knows about everything we've been through in game, maybe because he's from the future, and he hunts strong abyss enemies on his free time, including rushing into an abyss portal before it closed when the traveler couldn't even react. Who knows how many abyss heralds he killed in there. Number 6. Yay Sakura. The same things with Dane's left apply with her. Difficult to rank, no info, and she's gonna be released later on in the story. The only reason she's higher than Dane's left currently is due to her involvement in the recent story, where she just basically showed up for moral support. And she's actually a fox spirit with unknown abilities like using a lucky charm to show up inside Ball Shadow Realm, as well as knowing everything about anything despite not tell us anything because plot. And she also saved us from Scaramouche, so that's something. While the Traveler is being put to sleep with deadly gas, she was completely fine because, again, plot. Even without bribing Scaramouche, I think she would have been just fine in a battle. She's probably going to be released in the next banner, so hopefully we actually get to see how strong she is in the story. Now we have the top 5 of the list, and here at number 5 we have the Traveler. I don't want to spend too much explaining this one, basically the Traveler gets stronger every time a new patch rolls out, and they would continue to get stronger after every patch. Right now they're currently strong enough to defeat Signori with easy difficulty, then take on the real Ball right after, who should be far stronger than Clone Ball. Yes, he only managed to win because of plot with the power of friendship or one for all type power boost, but I'd say that's a pretty good feat regardless. I should also mention that in this place it also refers to the other twin sibling. I'd like to assume that this is a Naruto Sasuke type rivalry where both of them constantly get stronger and stronger and match each other. We got Naruto who we play as the main character, we got Sasuke who's the villain, and then we have the Sakura of the story. 
completely useless. Number four, Skiramush. This is similar to Senora where they might not be playable, but I'm not sure why they would waste his design. Based on the story events, I have a good feeling that he would get a massive power boost. If you were paying attention to the story, you'll know that Skiramush is actually the original clone of Ball, who was modified by the Fatui, and he's also in possession of Ball's Gnosis. We don't know for sure if Skiramush is able to use the powers of the Gnosis, so this is just a theory, but we know for a fact that he's a lot stronger than Senora based on info from Ye. We don't really know how strong he currently is since he never actually fights, but since he is a Ball clone, we can assume he's close to the level of the current show and we've seen the current Shogun clone one-shot Senora. Also kind of got overpowered by double element Kazuha. If Kazuha getting a double element power boost made him that strong, imagine how strong Skiramush would be with a Delusion and a Gnosis. That would be pretty broken. In at number three we have Ball. This is pretty obvious, we know she's crazy strong, she's taking down countless enemies, able to cause lightning anywhere, made two clones of herself, made her own Shadow Realm, can block her abilities to use vision powers, she's got her own finishing move that one-shots, and she's able to do this? What's there left to be said? She can do all this, and yet I still don't think she's as strong as we've seen. In the number two, we have Zhongli. Some of you probably think that Ball should be higher than Zhongli, but there's three main reasons why I think he's stronger. Firstly, he's the oldest Archon, meaning he had a lot more experience in battle, probably encountered more opponents over time. Second, we've seen how strong Osail is, a god that cannot die. It took all of Liyue to actually defeat him, yet Zhongli has done it all by himself. He could take care of the problem with ease. Not saying Ball is weaker than Osail, but she might struggle with finding a way to trap it. And third of all, Ball had a twin sister who was the real Archon of the time, who died during the Archon War. We don't know who killed her, but this does show us that Ball could be taken care of, because if her sister was an Archon, we can assume that the other twin was stronger than the current Archon. So for those reasons, I'm gonna have to give this win to Zhongli. And this includes both of them with or without a Gnosis. Also, based on Pokemon logic, ground does be lightning. Anyway, that's the video- oh wait, I'm forgetting someone. Number one, uh... Was it again? Oh yeah, the unknown god at the beginning of the game that everyone forgot about. Anyway, that's it for the video, guys. This is a completely random video, I, and I don't think I'll make this kind of video again. I just really got bored. I have nothing else to upload these days. All the new games I want to try out are coming out soon, and I don't think I'll be able to play Genshin again. Just There's nothing to do in Genshin, to be honest. Like It's kind of boring. <laughs> like, I'm more interested in the story than the actual gameplay. Also, it kind of triggers my gambling addiction. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll catch you guys next time.